Good morning guys and girls and thank you for watching ASFN. Now, yes, after the recent news last night, the uh, country will be going into lockdown. Guys, that means that we need to do our part as well, stay home. That doesn't mean uh, we can still slip out and go fishing, unfortunately. So I encourage everybody to take that responsibility and do their part and adhere to this. The quicker we can get through this, the quicker we can get fishing again. But from ASFN's side, guys, I want to uh, ensure you that we will continue bringing you daily content. We are busy planning that from Friday, we will increase our content we can bring to you guys and bring as much fishing to your homes as what we possibly can. Now, keep in mind the ASFN Fishing Channel has got over 1,400 fishing videos and educational videos, tips and tricks. This is the ideal time to make your traces, guys. So you've pretty much got two, three days to get some hooks and material, whatever you need, to sit and make those traces and practice those knots and anything that can assist your fishing going forward. Those things we never have time for to do properly. Now is the time you guys can get stuck into that. And from ASFN's side, we will make sure we bring you as much content as what we possibly can. Thank you for all your cooperation. And uh, yes, we're looking forward to this period being as short as possible so we can all get fishing again. Enjoy today's fishing show. And guys, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click that notification button. Thank you, guys. Here we go. <laughs> Ready for action. Good morning guys and girls and thank you for watching ASFN. We're here at Mtanzini Banks. Finally started to happen this side this year. We're, we're now uh, already seven days into, eight days into March. And uh, the banks have been quiet, not enough northeasterly yet to actually cool the water down. We've been sitting with 25 degree plus water on the Zululand coast here, making it very difficult to, to buy a bite somewhere. And then the, here and there, a nice little window where the guys got some good fish. Some really big sandies though, here and there. And obviously the guys on the drones have been uh, getting quite a bit of fish because they can get to the colder water. But it shouldn't be an excuse today. I haven't felt the water temperature. In fact, the ones on the side, oh, that's nice. There's nothing wrong, eh? And the water is brown like you can see. It's been five days, fifth day of northeast, but only three days really nice strong northeast or four days. But it should should have made a difference. Um, and with me, I've got Shalvin, one of our ambassadors, and Egan Naidu, one of our members. And uh, Kumaran's on his way. We fished last night in Durban in the basin without much luck. There were some fish, but on uh, I think it was on fresh mackerel because again we didn't get too many bites there. Um, so we're hoping things change here a bit. If the diamonds aren't gale, there's definitely a chance for a sandy and a honey, especially in the formation here, the spot we're gonna fish. It looks so, so nice. And I'm gonna kick it off with my, the tournament, with my dog fight. I've got 50 pound braid on there. And if you're gonna ask me why is it blue, that was still the test grand, the J braid grand. I was testing, no need to take it off yet. Um, and then I've got a 150 pound J braid leader. I'm just fishing a, a piece of mono on a swivel from that leader. 
and then I'm going to fish a 135 pound surf rod steel, purely for whatever toothy critters are around. Because there's a chance for Sandy's, I am gonna fish. Uh -uh, I don't want to fish this trace. Sorry, I'll make a trace now quickly. Different one. Because this one I took the, the nylon coating off for Raggy specifically, but with the diamonds and stuff in the area, possibly, or oh, with the possible diamonds in the area, I don't want to want to fish that. Um, guys, it's now important that you know need to know when you come to Tanzini Banks, you need a permit to drive these roads. Um, through the forest here and park here by Zini and we'll leave some details in the description of this video where who you can contact to get a permit it's an annual permit and that uh, also indemnifies you for being in this area etc etc everything's uh, written on the permit excited to fish so I'm just gonna make a quick uh, mackerel bait I'm just gonna use a head and some cutlets uh, I'm going a bit uh, on a smaller bait uh, hopefully anything that's in the water is gonna attack this bait and uh, find some interest so I'm gonna be using one side of this head just getting open here it's got a lot of blood in there so that's what I'm gonna be using Throwing some cutlets on it. So I have some flavor in the water. First pull for the morning. Brings out the fish and my trusted Grand Elite with my Saltus 8000 is going to do the job for me this morning. So here we go. Tight lines, gents. minutes before low spring low um, so the push will work better but I'm already getting a bit of slack line who knows what that is we'll see now but yeah as soon as the push starts from nine o'clock it should get we should go on
That's a nice one. The first bite I had. Unfortunately, I got, in, got bitten off. Uh, got another bait in the water, and boom, first fish for the morning. Uh, just a quick uh, way to show you how to measure up uh, these sharks. On the top of the nose, you measure the big bottle there. That's where you get it. And that's 76. I sent you the first bait. It's gonna get the fish, but the first bait got the pull, the second bait got the fish. Okay, another quick bait in the water. Let's. This is an all-round bait for me. For edibles and non-edibles, it's been working well for me for the past few years. So I'm just sticking to what works for me. Keep the scoreboard ticking. As you put the bait, you start shaping it up, soften them up, get all those oils and juices flowing. Boom, here we go. How's it guys? We're here at the banks. We're actually joining Andre and Chalvin here today. So we're here to target some diamonds, target some sandies. <laughs> Some bait out to see what we can get. Um, Shackle I'm using today is my uh, Salters Grinder, the heavy, with my Salters 8000, 40 pound J blade, standard face. I've got a 7 ounce cone sinker, a dingle dangle, homemade, Cheno Demon Circle, alright, and 7x7 uh, surf plot. It's a full metal jacket 7x7 surf plot, nice, soft, and subtle. So that's what we're using. I've got uh, fresh bonnie and a fresh uh, knuckle there so I'm gonna put a bait out and see what we can get I'm hoping we can get a diamond or even a sandy but we'll see the wind's starting to pump a bit now but uh, we'll continue fishing and see what we can get see you guys okay James this is because of all the shad and the peckers and the smaller fish I keep my big bait but a bit higher up I put another swivel with two knots and two beads and a and a 90 pound steel with a circle hook and put some mackerel on there for those bigger shad. The sardine, the smaller shad hits, and the pickers faster, and the mackerel, you sometimes get a bigger shad. We want that head, we want some shad for later to work through these pickers. Hey guys, just to prove the theory, Exactly what I said, the shed is towing your bait to get some shed. hook I had a shad bin to entice any of those biggest shad that's in the area and on my bottom hook still trying for one of those flat fish I had a mackerel head with some fillets wrapped around it. My Shalvin and them are taking a monster bait out for a, for a zambi with a drone. I'm quite keen today to get a, a cast fish. I'm making my baits a bit big though. I'm gonna admit. <laughs> Not the nicest bait, but the water is nice and dirty. And I'm a bit overexcited to get that fatty that just pulled me onto the hook.
lost the fish here, gents. I think something was probably swam into the line and cut me off. But that was a nice run. Uh, I'll try to get another bait in the water. Ah, unlucky. Waited for the pull. Swam into the line or something. Yeah, that was a very, very big, very strong fish, eh? I saw this big In all honesty, I was holding on for dear life there. <laughs> no jokes. The drag was solid, and uh, that was 15 minutes of unbelievable power. So I just tightened up. I've got 50 pound on you, so there's no playing around. And I know something can swim you off, so you rather tighten up so you can land the fish quicker. And that thing just <laughs> it had no consideration for my drag or the way I pulled. And uh, I know I'm not trying to pull a fish or put pressure. Only reason I went to sit down is because of that pressure on the rod. It's very hard to stand and hold that rod and keep your balance under that immense pressure on the drag. So yeah, it's great to hook fish like that. It's a pity when they come off. Okay guys, now I had a two meter trace on there, 200 pound. And I had a meter, one mil. And it's completely chafed and it was cut off here, obviously by the tail or the scoot. Gives you an idea how big this fish was. That scoot on the back of the tail is sharp. And this you can see is almost cut. So with that fish swimming away, and his tail may be hitting this piece behind two and a half meters from its mouth that's what popped it and it's chafed in a couple of areas here you can see but it cut him there that's very unfortunate but what i do know it's only got the trace in its mouth it's a circle look so it's sitting on the outside it will fall out so our fish is okay whatever it was Yes. 
with the sinker and the, the hook line. The hook snoot got cut off on that braid. You can see the braid in the line. So guys, that's the result. Another little shot. Toki Louise Red Tide Spray. Try and get yourself some of this. Excellent, excellent product. Now gents, not every day comes with results when you're out there fishing. But the essence of fishing and why us as anglers enjoy it so much, it's because of those factors we can't determine and control. There's only a certain part of fishing that you can control. And that's the effort in preparation, in your traces, and doing the right thing, putting the bait in the right place, making sure you have the freshest possible baits, and hoping the nature's elements line up weather-wise, water temperature, and the fish plays along. But that part which we can't control is what makes us go back every time. Now thank you all for watching and thank you for those who have already subscribed. We ask that you please subscribe to our channel, like this video and remember to push that notification drop down selecting the type of notifications you want to receive. Guys this really helps us in bringing you more practical content that can get you better results.